This is Mr. Green at Art in the Heart. Today we're going to cover the basics of lighting and shading. Okay, and somewhat of perspective because it's, it's an illusion. We're going to actually take three shapes, the three basic shapes for drawing, which are a circle, triangle, and square. And I'm going to show you how to define a light source and apply shading to those figures. Okay, so grab your pencils, your papers, and follow along. All right. So without further ado, we're going to go, and like I said, the three shapes that you can use to create virtually anything when it comes to drawing are square, triangle, and a circle. But as you see, this square, triangle, and a circle are just flat on the page. They have no dimension. In order to give them dimension, we can um, add something that's called shading. Shading comes from lighting, and the lighting is artificial because we have to determine where the light source is going to come from. So, in order to do that, I'm going to redraw these objects. Simple square, triangle, and the all-powerful circle. Okay, <clears throat> so now, similar to here, but a little bit bigger. What I'm going to do now is to find a light source. So let's just make an imaginary flashlight up here. It's our flashlight. And it is shining light on these objects right here. Okay? So with that being said, we know that these objects have light on them. I'm going to switch my pencils here because this technical pencil gives me a real thin line. A regular drawing pencil. You can use a number two pencil. This just happens to be um, a 6B pencil, which is kind of dark. And it's fine. So we know that light's shining, and what you have to do is you have to actually look at an object, take an object and look at it. And um, I don't have anything to show you right here, but you can take some fruit or something that happens to be a pyramid or a square and look at it with light shining on it, and then you can go in and shade accordingly. So now that I know that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at my object, and I know because the light is shining here, it's going to be lightest on this side, and then the shading will fall in here at the bottom. Okay, and right now I'm just using a crisscross method, or really, it's, it's not any crossing, but just a, a slight shading method, whereas I'm just taking the pencil back and forth to add dimension. Okay, and as you can see, what happens is I'm going to lighten it out as I go closer to the center. What this does is it gives the illusion of depth, because if you look now, this area looks like it could be further away from here and this area looks obviously lighter than here so it gives the impression that being that the light is shining here it turns our circle into a sphere now I can further enhance that by looking at this and adding somewhat of a shadow right here as it would be cast off this object Okay, and then my darkest point would be here at the bottom because that's where the less light would come in. As you can see, it's rounding that out. Okay, now I have a spear. So my circle went from a two-dimensional circle, like here, to a three-dimensional sphere with the addition of artificial light. Okay, let's see if we can do the same thing with our triangle and make it a pyramid. Since the light is coming from this direction, We'll have shade come in. And I'm using the same back and forth method on my pencil here to add depth to it. I'm getting thinner as I get closer to the top, widening it out as I get to the bottom. And this gives it somewhat of a rounded appearance. And yet again, this area will be darkest because so we can be where the less light is. And this area closer to the top and on the sides will be the lightest this up as I go I don't want it to be as dark as you just apply the pencil lightly and you can put more pressure on it as you get to the darker areas and yet again I've caused that illusion whereas I've made my two-dimensional triangle go to a three-dimensional pyramid really it's a trick because this is a piece of paper it's a 2d space so your mind is tricking it and when, once these uh, techniques are applied to give it the appearance of it being 3D where we know it really isn't because it doesn't go in space. Same thing here, I'm going to look at this and kind of apply somewhat of a shadow. Okay, 
okay? And there you have the pyramid, okay? Same thing with the square. We know that one side is going to be inherently darker than the other because the light, of course, again, is shining from here. So, knowing that, we're going to start at this bottom corner. And it really helps if you draw from observation, if you actually look at some objects. I've just been doing this for so long that, you know, you kind of get an eye for it, feel for it, and practice, practice, and more practice. Okay, now this could come out depending on how I shade it to make it look rounded where it can look more like a cylinder actually, but we really want it to be kind of cubist. So, like this. Obviously it's gonna be lighter on this side than here. And more shading. More shading. And then I'm gonna add my shadow. to this to give it its dimension as well. Okay. These same techniques that I'm showing you here can be applied to most objects. And obviously if the light were coming from the other direction, the shading would reverse. Okay. There you have it. Practice, practice, and practice. So you have square to cube or cylinder, triangle to pyramid, and circle to sphere. All with an artificial light. This is my light right here. And remember, this is part of shading and somewhat of perspective. And perspective really is, a, if you look it up, it's really a, an illusion of a 3D, 3D space that's actually on a 2D plane because this paper is 2D, okay? To better demonstrate that, and I'll do this right quick since we're here, if you had a square, we can say that this only has one side because it is a square as you see it. However, if I do this technique here where I use an X, use another X, and I connect these, these. Now we've created a 3D cube. And you could say it's a glass cube. When you say it's glass, if I put a bug on it, let's say let's put an ant or a fly right here. What side is it on? Can you say that it's on the front side, the back side, the quarter side? You really can't tell, can you? But yet again, this is an illusion of 3D space on a 2D or two-dimensional plane, which is the sheet of paper, okay? Practice, practice, and practice.